Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Prep Life. Let's talk about this Louisville, Kentucky shooting that took place. If you've already seen the video, it's not surprising because the police already released it on YouTube and the media 24 hours after the shooting took place. This is a new precedent. This does not usually happen where police departments release the body-worn camera footage of the police officers that were involved. But in this case, I think it sets a good precedent. I want to see the video of officers running in to gunfire to protect innocent lives and putting the bad guy down. That should be on a constant loop. One, to communicate very clearly. If you decide to become an active shooter or violently attack other people, you will be put down. And that is new in our society and culture. Also, it should be uh, noted that the Louisville, Kentucky Police Department were brave in every single way and every single measure that I saw, that I analyzed. Watching the video as the FTO, the field training officer, and his new 11-day out of the academy officer, Officer Nick Wilt, pull up on the scene. A hasty assault. They're rolling up with their vehicle, trying to put themselves in harm's way to stop an active shooter from hurting anybody else. And they did so. They kind of over-penetrated the target. The FTO told the, the new guy to back up. They backed up. New guy gets out of the vehicle, grabs his pistol. He's covering his FTO while his FTO, who's obviously more experienced, grabs the carpine, puts it into action, and they start going to work. Unfortunately, Officer Nick Wilt was shot in the head during this initial engagement, and he's fighting for his life. We're praying for Officer Nick Wilt, 11-day rookie cop, putting his ass on the line. His FTO offset, who also took a grazing round from the gunman, and eventually they put the gunman down. They went on the X. They evacuated Officer Nick Wilt. They started treating a, a mass casualty circumstance where he had five dead and eight wounded. Uh, some of the survivors even locked themselves in the bank vault, and that's the end of the story. Now, a lot of people have already sensationalized this, talking for gun control, talking about a magazine gun ban, the list goes on. Uh, don't, don't, doesn't it get tiring to you? The, the logic or the irreasonable logic, because it's certainly logical in their mind that if we put up signs because they're gun-free zones, if we take away the guns from law-abiding citizens, that's somehow going to stop violent actors who decide to do deliberate acts of violence and killing people is going to somehow stop it. More people are killed in vehicle accidents than killed by the hands of people with guns. Well, Mike, that's not true. Well, it is true if 60% of all gun deaths are suicide, which they certainly are. So what are we talking about? Well, we're not talking about responsibility. We're not even talking about the actual issue, which is mental health. I mean, when somebody does anything in a violent act, I don't know, like take a car, drive through a, a trove of people running them down during a parade, and it's not covered uh, because of the double standard, that's a problem in our society. You guys see this um, BLM protester that was shot and killed by this Uber driver who happened to be a sergeant in the military. And when they did this, I don't know if he was a veteran or not. You guys can correct me in the comments down below. But essentially, he had a record or he had evidence that he had been talking about protesters in the past, within the past couple of weeks, even days leading up to the shooting, where he said if attempted to be pulled or dragged out of his vehicle, he would use deadly force. And that's right I just did an uh, uh, article on my Patreon, which I often do, writing short little blogs for my Patreon followers on patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover about the states that respect, stand your ground, and castle doctrine. Your vehicle is your domicile. So if somebody tries to pull you out of your vehicle and threaten your life in the state of Texas, where certainly this applies, then that's within the confines of law and your right to use self-defense. So the overall arching issue here is when you have a radical DA, which you certainly do in this case, a district attorney who's woke, who decides to go out and get 
a body of people that they know are going to potentially bring charges forward. They try and convict this man of defending his life, who, by the way, had an AK-47 at a BLM protest. I would ask you, if you're just you know, trying to contrast yourself against this situation, try to understand it more deeply, don't put yourself in those shoes. Put your wife in those shoes. Put your girlfriend, put your spouse, put your mother in those shoes. So she's an Uber driver. She's driving a, and dropping off a person at these protests, gets locked in by people trying to get around them, They become violent. They start banging on the hood of the vehicle. And then a man with an AK-47 shows up peacefully protesting, raises the gun. There is video of him basically at the low ready. You come up on me with my children in the car or me in the car with an AK-47, I would do the exact same thing he did. Defend my life. I'm not taking chances and neither should you. But here we are, we have a radical woke DA who gets probably a radical woke group and body of people. The convincing argument is he shouldn't have been in fear of his life. Why? The man had an AK-47. And they say, well, there wasn't a round in the chamber. How the hell are we supposed to know that? Especially when he's going up to a vehicle and, and trying to um, position himself to demonstrate his intent that you don't mess with us. I would do the exact same thing. And now this guy's charged and convicted of murder, and hopefully the governor of Texas is looking at it and going, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely pardon this guy, as per, as it should be. But welcome to the club, guys. This is only going to get worse. You see this Bud Light thing? I don't, I don't really get the Anheuser-Busch Bud Light thing. Um, I've never been a fan of Bud Light. I drink beer, certainly. I'm a big fan of beer, but I'm not into like really crappy beer. And Bud Light is absolutely crap. Supposedly they put on a on a pedestal and made an announcement because the new marketing chief uh came in and said there's a there's a video of her, which I watched, which is really funny, of her talking about offering a new style of inclusion for Bud Light, of changing the way that it's been done for ages to get away from the frat boy mentality. Uh, I mean, like frats are the ones who drink your beer. But yeah, yeah, double down on wokeness and being inclusive with a beer company. So how did that affect them? Well, they took a 30% loss. And I see a lot of people doing videos and stuff, which I think are funny. But I see a lot of people talking like, you shouldn't do that because that's what the left would do. They would, they would cancel you. Okay, so one, that's, I, I've been accused of that when I canceled, I decided to cancel Carhartt because the CEO came out supporting BLM. Uh, well, I don't support BLM because, not because I, I don't support black people because I certainly do. I don't support an organization that's destroying black communities. I don't, dis, I don't support a Marxist ideology. So that's the context. So when Carhartt came out and said what they said, I'm not as a consumer going to support a company that does that. So I I stopped supporting them and I let people know my opinion. So when people go online and tell you, hey, I'm not drinking Bud Light anymore and not supporting them, that's not cancel culture. Cancel culture is not supporting somebody and trying to burn down their reputation as an individual. Like going after the transgender person would be, cancel culture, but canceling the brand because you're a consumer and you decide, well, their values don't align with me. So be it. When COVID-19 came out, we came out and said, we're not shutting our doors. Thank God we live in a free state of Utah. And they said, Hey, we don't expect you to shut your doors. In fact, the fire department showed up during our 400, 500 plus people, um, grand opening and we're supportive and nobody was wearing masks. Because we didn't, we believed the science. We didn't believe the wokeness ideology and all the crap that was coming out. And nobody's trying to shut us down because we live in a free state of Utah. But we stood our ground because we're not going to compromise. I didn't tell any of my employees that they needed to get the vaccine because I don't believe in that. So if your values align with a company, more power to you. Like more power 
to you. That's how it should be. Like spin every, like everything from the hat. Like Kevin Cool, I love Cool. Based here in Utah, outdoor great company. Phil Crown Survival. I'll wear my hat. I'm wearing uh, cool cool shorts. I'm like a walking cool commercial. Uh, I wear Eris watches with my buddy Matt Graham. Uh, like support the companies that support America. Staccato got a staccato right here. Um, Carry a three six five a Sig because they they build Sigs in America. So there is nothing wrong with that. But if you're drinking Bud Light, just stop. And and this woke ideology, they will get theirs. It's just a matter of time. You let's let them do that more often. Bring it, bring it, and let us know and identify what we're going to support, what we're not going to support. Please just show us your ass. The greatest thing about social media is that. Speaking of showing your ass, you guys see this Dan Crenshaw, David Goggins uh, drama. So I'll be quick with this because I have to jump on a podcast with Clint Emerson. Um, let me just say this. The beef derives from something that David Goggins said on a podcast. If you don't know who David Goggins is, he's a popular guy, um, ultra marathoner, athlete, former Navy SEAL, writes books, does all the things, inspires people to stay hard, right? That's his whole thing. He hangs with Cameron Haynes. They, they do uh, marketing stuff together. And um, Dan Crenshaw, congressman, Navy SEAL, um, same kind of deal. Like both of them have their own little lines of popularity. Well, David Goggins goes on a podcast and he talks about a guy, unbeknownst to him, that he doesn't realize he's talking about him. Uh, When Dan Crenshaw is brought up, he's talking about a guy named Mike Day. Mike Day is a legend in the SEAL community, but also in the special operations community. I know, I I didn't know Mike Day personally. I knew of him because he was shot 27 times in combat and survived. It's a big deal. He killed the combatants that shot him um, after he was left behind on target, um, unbeknownst to him, he wakes up and he fights for his life. Story of heroism, story of resilience. But unfortunately, Mike Day recently took his own life. TBI, PTS, we don't know. But certainly, it's a sensitive topic. Supposedly, on the podcast, David Goggins said that um, Crenshaw was talking about this guy who got shot 20-something times, some dead guy. And then Crenshaw said, how dare he talk about the SEAL team's dev guru, um, and also um, Mike Day like that. Well, the problem is Mike Day wasn't dead when this podcast was recorded. Also, Mike Day wasn't alive when the podcast aired. So, you know, I understand this part. Goggins came out and defended himself, right? Crenshaw came out and attacked David Goggins. Here's the ultimate problem. I've seen this. It's happened to me before. It's happened to other members of special operations that I know from members of our own community, it's silly. It's a waste of time. It's not going to benefit anybody. And it shows how unprofessional and how showing your ass on social media for the attention is an ugly thing. I I know you're over it. I, I, I get... I get the feedback. I get the DMs. I get the in person conversations at our seminars all the time that people are just over the drama. They want to be positive. For what it's worth, I don't know David Goggins and Dan Crenshaw personally. I know of them. I know people who know them. Here's what I say Who gives a crap what they did on active duty? If you're criticizing two Navy SEALs who were on active duty doing the job and you never served a day of your life in uniform, then stop. Just stop. Because what they did in uniform is not ultimately, in my opinion, who they are now. And I take people for what they are in the good. I've had a lot of shitty people in my life. A lot of shitty people. Most of them I've kicked out and de-X'd out of my life. And thank God. But the reason I have done that is because they were shitty. I don't think David Goggins and Dan Crenshaw are shitty people. I think they're good human beings who want to do really good in the world. They should contact each other, meet up in person, no social media, and literally work things out like professionals because that's what we expect. I mean, that's what we expect from professionals who are doing good in the world. Dan, I would say to you, it's not worth your time to get involved in the dramatics. It's not a good look, bro. Goggins, I would say keep doing you. Keep staying hard and don't let anybody, anybody... Uh, who's criticizing you, talking about your former past life as a Navy SEAL, get to you. I know it gets to you. You might say it doesn't get to you. It gets to you. It gets to me. 
But we've moved past that and you have an important mission and an important focus, an important purpose. I see both of them benefit in people's lives tremendously. Like, you don't like Dan Crenshaw? Then vote him out. You don't like Dan Crenshaw and you think you could do better? Then go try to be in Congress. Go be a politician. Go try to be a Navy SEAL. You don't like David Goggins because you think it's a gimmick? You think staying hard while you're eating potato chips out of your belly button um, is easy? Well, likely that's an insecurity in you, especially if you're telegraphing it on social media. We just need to get back to work. That's all we need to do is get back to work. Guys, I love you guys. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing for Phil Craft Survival. Check out the Phil Craft Survival channel on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit the notification tab. If you guys want, um, I do have a sleep aid. I was just talking uh, with the guys from The Wolf 21, which is my CBD, CBN company. We also offer CBG. I just did a video on tactical response. CBG, people have asked, is a cannabinoid that gives you a uplift in tick without the caffeine, right? Without the caffeine. I do coffee in the morning. I do CBG throughout the day, and it's all natural. You guys can check that out. Tactical response. It's on thewolf21.com. I love you guys. Till next time. Peace.